Exit. How to win an interstellar war by Kurzgesagt in a nutshell. That is what we are going to be reacting to today. G'day, g'day. I'm Chase, or Blind Guy Reacts. Let's get into it. Okay. Be prepared to make contact. Our new limited drop has landed. Only on the Kurzgesagt shop. Oh, rad. So Could aliens destroy us from light years away? Hmm. Another day at the Kurzgesagt labs, <laughs> where we answer the most important... Okay. You just got to think about that, eh? Imagine they have a, a workplace or a massive headquarters, I suppose. They probably do. And I feel like questions like that would get asked a lot and there would be constant talking and discussion. It would either be really cool or really annoying. Okay. Questions with science. Today, how might civilizations wage war across light years? What kind of devastating weapons could they use? And what would they look like? I mean, I guess that's kind of Star Wars, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Lightsabers and the Force and whatnot. Okay. Meet our two players. A yellow dwarf star system home to a species of primates. Humans, as they call themselves, Woo! recently became a technological civilization. Yeah. They Ripping have the rockets, way. nuclear reactors, and memes. How cute. <laughs> the Smorpions disagree. Oh, the they reside on a planet the around... Smorpions, did he they have rockets, nuclear reactors, and, and memes. memes. How, How cute. cute. The Smorpions disagree. Scorpions. Okay. They reside on a planet around the orange dwarf star HD 40307, 42 light years away. Oh. The Smorpion civilization developed earlier than humans, and they have much better technology. They've recently built a Dyson Swarm around their star, which gives them near limitless energy. Ooh. And they noticed humanity, uh. which is unfortunate as the Smorpions are planning a hyperspace bypass through our solar system. Uh, right, right, so right, they decided that humanity has to go. Interstellar war is hard though. Frontline. I, I have discussed aliens on my channel before. I personally don't believe that they are real in, in regards to what we envision them as, you know, very intelligent creatures like ourselves. I, I think there is definitely life forms in the form of bacteria on other planets, but I don't think. I, I think we are the most intelligent. Civilize it. I, I think we are the most intelligent creatures in the universe. That's my opinion. You can disagree. You can discuss in the comment section below. I have discussed aliens before. Personally, I don't agree. But if they did, I feel like we. If they, if I did believe that they existed, I would. I think we would lose, <laughs> right? Or maybe not. Maybe they are not as evolved, not as technologically advanced as us. Who knows? But it would definitely be either cool or scary. It's like a zombie apocalypse, you know. That would be pretty scary, but I'm sure some people would enjoy it. Okay. Its tactics and logistics are meaningless at these scales. It's also fought across time. Decades oh. will pass between oh, wow. firing a weapon and learning <laughs> whether it hit that. or not. Sending and, in and who would you use? Would you use military personnel, like the generals and sergeants of the, the army and the air force and the navy? It wouldn't really matter, would it? You'd need to have a whole new process a whole new training system and yeah tactics and how to win a war like this because it's never really been fought before at all this is a cool idea what the heck okay invasion fleet is futile even if the scorpions travel at a large fraction of the speed of light the journey to earth would take decades or even centuries and humans <laughs> would have plenty of time to prepare yeah if you want to learn more about the mind-numbing problem of war between alien civilizations <laughs> we made a video about it oh, cool. today will help the Smorpions construct a weapon that is not only extremely long-range and as fast as physically possible, but that will totally destroy everything on Earth. So, no human survivors will come to an act of vengeance on, on the Smorpions. You're meant to be on our team, man. <laughs> like, what's... In the future, in interstellar war, you want to win with one shot. Our bird scientists have found three Smorpion designs, the Star Laser, the Relativistic Missile, and the Ultra Relativistic Electron Beam all based Ultra on real technologies electrons. that humans are using in some form already. Let's see how they work. The star I guess that's kind of cute though because they're, as he said, it is quite cute, the human civilization, but we're only theoretically imagining technologies that we already are aware of. There's no, and that's all we can do because how can we imagine something that we don't have or th not imagine but put together that could legit logistically work 
how could we put something together that either doesn't already exist or that it's something that we are not aware of so if they are more advanced than us then they wouldn't use any of these because they would be well past that right okay our laser as an advanced technological civilization the scorpions harness the energy of their star by surrounding it with billions of solar power satellites That's this really dyson smart. swarm <laughs> collects one percent of the star's energy output a million billion billion watts 50 billion times more than all humanity generates. Oh, cool. <laughs> what if all the power of the Dyson Swarm, all those satellites, were used to create a star laser? Like any laser, the bigger it is, the longer its range. Human-built lasers use small mirrors to focus, so they have short ranges. The Smorpions could turn their entire Dyson Swarm into a collective focusing element. I love this music again. It's got the alien theme, the wow, wow. <laughs> and it's very... It's really electronic, the, the music that they're using. It's very technical and electronic, and it's got that vibe, and I really like how they always match the background music to whatever they're talking about, and especially it changes throughout the video and what they're mentioning. It's really cool. Okay. A million kilometers wide. The star laser has an insane range as a result, enough to focus on target Earth from a distance of over two million light years. Ooh. Okay, let's shoot it. Oh, no. Countless tiny beams combine into a single huge beam. Laser beams are normally invisible in space, but the star laser is so powerful that light scattering off bits of dust and gas in its path makes it clearly visible in the sky. Wow. A gigantic column of green light. The laser travels at the speed of light, which oddly enough is still pretty slow on a galactic level. It takes a whole day until the laser has left the Smorpion system, oh, wow. shooting into the emptiness between stars. It will travel for decades, occasionally melting the odd bit of interstellar dust or asteroid. 42 years after being fired, it arrives without warning. Humans only notice a weird green glow in the sky, and then they're gone. 1% of the energy of a star concentrated into a beam the diameter of Earth, traveling 42 light years. It burns the exposed half of the planet with the intensity of three million suns. Oh the seas gosh. boil and evaporate, <laughs> fires scour the land, and within minutes, Earth's crust begins to melt into a sea of lava. Far As out. the planet rotates, it turns into a red hot hell with no trace of life. After a day, it's all over and the laser dies down. In another 42 wow. years, the Smorpions will know if they've been successful. That's another thing about interstellar war. When you attack, your grandchildren will be the ones to find out if you won. It's like all the bombs from World War II exploding in the 80s and us only seeing the effect today. Okay, the st okay. That was a really well done, cool explanation. Obviously the idea of us being absolutely obliterated isn't too epic, but it's the way he explained it and how he put it into perspective like that was really cool. But man, could you imagine that? Imagine we picked up from, uh, each government would pick up that something is going towards Earth, but it takes 10 years, and there would be announcements like, we'll try our best, this this is beyond our technology, but we'll try our best to, you know, have a counter-attack. <laughs> but as of now, you've got 10 years to live, enjoy it. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Please stand by, you know. Ah, uh, that would be, man. Okay. Star laser's extreme range, speed of light attack, and ability to melt down any target make it a premier interstellar weapon. But is there something else? Okay. But even then, if they were a lot more advanced than us, they would probably want to make us their slaves, right? Surely just make us their slaves, and because if they're way more intelligent and advanced than us, then we're no real threat to them, so they would it would be best to enslave us and use us for something. There's, there's a lot of us, so yeah. or just study us like a like a little little goldfish swimming around a fishbowl, just maybe a bit of entertainment. <laughs> or they or they try the Truman Show, but on a mass scale, with our planet. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know the intentions of these these people, well, aliens, not people. Okay. The relativistic missile. What if instead of converting the energy of their Dyson swarm into a laser? The Smorpions used it to shoot a super bullet, a relativistic hmm. missile going as close to the speed of light as possible. This sort of weapon is at the limits of what the Smorpions technology can handle as it requires loads of a highly dangerous material, antimatter, the evil twin of regular matter. Humans have only managed to produce a few nanograms of antimatter. 
With their unlimited energy, Scorpions can manufacture it at an industrial scale to build antimatter rockets. When antimatter and matter are mixed, they annihilate, which in more practical terms means there's a big, big boom releasing gamma rays and plasma. The physics is complicated, but basically, if you have a really strong magnetic field, you can deflect the plasma through a nozzle, just like in the chemical rockets humans use. Does anyone know the name of the Kurzgesagt narrator? He's, he sounds like... I, I don't know what he sounds like. I'll, I'll think of it later or in a different video. What is his name? <laughs> you know, what, what does he sound like? But it would be much, much faster. The fastest rocket possibly, basically. Our relativistic missile is much bigger than a skyscraper. At the bottom is the bell-shaped magnetic nozzle 100 meters wide. Hmm. On top of it are 250 really floors filled with antimatter and matter ready to annihilate each other. <laughs> On the top floor is a 300 kilogram projectile looking quite small, about the size of a person. To stop them getting damaged on the way, the missiles have dozens of sacrificial layers that form a Whipple shield. To make sure they do their job, the Scorpions build 1,000 missiles. Let's fire them. Launching all the relativistic missiles is a spectacular event. For a moment, the antimatter engines lighting up outshine their star. Their exhaust is a long trail of brilliant white, and as they accelerate away, they appear redder and redder until they turn invisible. Ooh. With the extreme amount of energy... See, that sounds a lot scarier than the green, the green, greenish sky <laughs> from the other one. ...you released by the matter-antimatter reactions, the missiles are accelerated to 99.9999996% of the speed of light. <laughs> yeah, don't forget the six. <laughs> they have effectively infinite range, as there's nothing really to slow them down. Mm, they true. arrive shortly after you can see them. The light from their launch will take 42 years to reach Earth. So, human astronomers might see the flash of the missile's launch, and then a few days later, they'll hit. Not enough time to prepare. <laughs> Each relativistic missile packs the kinetic energy of a dinosaur killer asteroid, so only uh, one needs to hit. Oh no. They never reach the ground, disintegrating instead at the edge of Earth's atmosphere. Intense blue flashes set everything on fire. Then, continent-sized fireballs slam down on the surface to smash everything into dust, repeatedly until nothing is left but rubble and smoke. Wow. So interstellar missiles with unlimited range, minimal warning, and delivering complete destruction of a planet's surface. That one is probably more efficient, right? Because it gives us a lot less warning. It's not as brutal. We would all die, obviously, so it's the same result, but I feel like that is the better of the two on the Smorphians, what do they call them? Smorians or something, their side. I feel like that would be the better one to use, but I'm not a, I'm not a Samorian, so... Okay. Nice. Nice. But they are a hassle to We're build. All dead. Is there something else, maybe? I love it. The ultra-relativistic electron beam. Ultra-relativistic Humans do funny electron. things to their food to rid it of bacteria and make it safe to eat, like shooting electron beams at strawberries. Small oh, cool. particle accelerators send electrons into the food with an energy similar to the radiation from nuclear reactions. <laughs> Not enough to burn the food, but deadly to bacteria. Smorpions had the same idea, but... Smorpions. I said Smorpions. Close. <laughs> bigger. The main challenge with an electron beam is range. Electrons are negatively charged particles, so they don't want to stay near each other. A regular electron beam will quickly spread out, making it harmless. Smorpions need it to cover distances of dozens of light years. So they've used the rules of the universe to trick the electrons, by building an ultra-relativistic electron beam, or UREB. What it does is accelerate the electrons to 99.9999999999999999998% of the speed of light. Poor Kurzgesagt, man. Let me hear that again. 9999 9999999999999998% of the speed of light. Faster than even the most powerful cosmic rays. The closer something travels to the speed of light, the slower time moves for it relative to the rest of the universe. And since these electrons are moving so incredibly fast, for every second of spreading they experience, over 5 million years pass in real time. A physics trick that lets the beam cross interstellar distances 
while remaining tightly focused on its target. Wow. The biggest particle accelerator on Earth is 27 kilometers long. The Scorpions need one that's over 100,000 kilometers long. Oh my the mega structure <laughs> eight times longer than Earth is wide. It's mostly a tube of magnets holding the beam together until the exit. Like a long trumpet of doom surrounded by an aura of deadly radiation. When it's fired, it produces Ugh, that was a trippy sound. What the heck? This is a ruler straight lightning bolt pointed at Earth. Its effects on arrival are less visible than the other weapons. No flashes of light, no massive firestorms, no explosions. It wow. doesn't destroy rocks, it destroys DNA. People oh, get wow. dizzy, then fall sick as their cells are pierced by radiation. <sighs> you might think that a deep bunker oh could gosh. save a few humans, but no. The Europe is so penetrating that its effects accumulate... And listen to this music he's using too. I should say they're using, I mean, it's, it's multiple people, right? But it's so... mysterious and, and, and extraterrestrial. <laughs> but this one does sound the scariest because we wouldn't even know what was going on. Again, the first one, we get basically get a 10-year timer saying oi prepare a counter-attack where you're gone the second one a couple of days this one pff, it's just we're basically just slowly eroding but it wouldn't even be slow it just we wouldn't know what was going on there's no visual indicator there's no there's just nothing the the disintegration of our dna like that's oh that one is the most unsettling to lethal doses even underground over days or weeks. In the end, just like our strawberries, Earth becomes sterile. Oh no. Simulation results. Hmm, another elaborate animated mm. science explainer by Kotzkazart where we've learned a lot, Kotzkazart. not sure exactly what. Luckily, the Scorpions don't really exist, <gasps> but what? others might. One oh, major no. downside of all our weapons is that others around the Milky Way could see you firing them which is not ideal mm. because you don't want to present yourself as a dangerous species and tell everybody where exactly you are. True. So maybe instead of shouting or shooting out into the universe, the best course of action seems to be to stay relatively quiet for now and observe. Maybe Woo. one day we'll witness distant stars shooting at each other and be glad we stayed out of it. Yes, very much so. But we don't have to stay out of intergalactic fun. There's a peaceful way to join Type 2 civilizations on their galactic adventures. Look, it's the Galactic Club, a cozy look. corner in the Langari vast X. universe reserved for friendly, quirky folk like you. Come in, and don't worry, we've got everything you need to fit right in. It's all part of our latest limited drop. Kill your alien friends with kindness and impress them well, with these colorful patches like and sweaters. Wear these new iconic t-shirts that represent your love of stargazing and show allegiance to our ultimate overlord deck. And the star of the show, a woven space blanket to wrap your skin. Our ultimate, our ultimate overlord duck. Self and your new alien buddies in. Oh my Maybe God. the cool. Hey, they might find shirts offensive. They may have been a naked civilization their whole existence. We don't know. This thing we've ever created. Definitely the largest. Like with our last limited drop, these items are available now until they sell out. And then never again. Pair them up with the 12,024 Cosmic Creations calendar to have a beautiful daily reminder of potential alien civilizations and a way to make plans with all your new pals. All of our products are designed and produced with love and care by us here at Kotzkazart. They are an integral part of the science story we try to tell. So start your journey on our channel and continue it with our posters, calendars and plushes. Every purchase directly funds what we do on this channel. Thank you so much for your support. Oh. Join the Galactic Club yep. now. Overlord Duck is waiting. <laughs> Gotta have the duck. He's always watching and he's waiting. Well, that was how to win an interstellar, I believe, not intergalactic, interstellar war by Kurtzgesagt in a nutshell. Thank you very much for watching. That was really interesting. I like the hypothetical ones. I mean, majority of them are hypothetical, right? But, again, beautifully presented, the music was awesome, the idea was scary, but still very cool, and very insightful, but terrifying. The Smorpions, glad they don't exist, obviously, but, yeah, I mean, again, let me know if you believe in aliens, or if you think that something like this could exist in our future. 
pretty scary, but again, very insightful, very funny. I love the little jokes and quips that they slide into their scripts. So that was very enjoyable. But I have been Chase of Blank Thank you very much for watching. I'll see myself out.